Welcome everybody to the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. Well, as we'd say in horticulture here, the Cincinnati Botanical Garden and Zoo. So like to, I know it's a rough time for everybody and uh, what we'd like to do is share the garden with you. Uh, we've planted over 121,000 tulips uh, for the enjoyment of, there would have been roughly 30,000 people enjoying this today. So what we're hoping to do is uh, give you a short tour through the main part of the display gardens and tell you a little bit about the Botanical Garden. So the Botanical Garden started in 1875. Um, what's unique, we're the second oldest zoo in the country, but what's unique about our zoo is that we started out as an experimental garden as well as a zoo. So one of the big things was to really have a lot of diversity in the plant material. So we started planting tulips about 2002 and literally we put in over, I would say millions of tulips over that past 18 or so years. And the process is pretty much like this. We uh, plan right after the annuals are done. We till up all our beds, get them nice and fluffy. And then we have hundreds of volunteers, corporate groups, uh, horticultural students from the various horticulture colleges in Cincinnati and we literally plant uh, over a hundred thousand tulips in the fall and then uh, hopefully mid-April uh, it hits the peak which is just about now and uh, so you're seeing close to a hundred thousand tulips at the zoo and uh, it, it is a literally a, a passion for everyone in Cincinnati to come to the zoo, especially on Easter weekend, to have this glorious of a, a garden. It's really a, an impressive time to be here at the zoo. What's weird though this year is there's no zero people at the zoo. So uh, we thought we'd take this time to do a Facebook Live and share our gardens with all of you. So one of the, again, beauties of the zoo is after the tulips are done blooming, uh, we'll dig the tulips up and there were close to I would say a uh, hundred volunteers almost a day that helps us come in and dig out the tulips and get prepared for our annual trials so after all the tulips are dug we replant all the beds and use probably 300 varieties of annuals new varieties of annuals uh, that go into the beds for the summer display those are currently being grown right now in our, in our garden, our greenhouses. So uh, again, this is our main display bed. So you're getting to see probably 50% of all the uh, tulips at the zoo right here. Many really cool varieties, lots of uh, yellows and, and reds and purples. Uh, the beds were designed by our horticulturist, uh, Tosh uh, Dobiash. And uh, this was her first year designing, and she did a spectacular job. So one of the things, uh, this is probably our largest display bed. And uh, not only do we have, you know, over 121,000 tulips of many different varieties, we also have thousands of trees and shrubs uh, and perennials that go along with the tulips. The tulips are basically the icing on the cake. So I think there's a, how did you plant them all was a question from Sarah. <laughs> and uh, trust me, uh, I didn't plant a whole lot of them, uh, but we literally uh, rototilled the beds and graded them out and then planted them with trowels. And literally there were hundreds of people, different people doing it. It took us about three to four weeks to do that. Another question from Kara was, what do we do with all of the bulbs? Well, normally we dig them out and put them in uh, bags and sell them uh, as the people were walking through. Uh, but unfortunately this year, uh, we did not have the chance to do that. Uh, the one thing that we are doing though, uh, since we cannot sell them, uh, it takes over, I would say, 100 people, volunteers a day to organize that sale. And since no uh, seasonal help or volunteers can be at the zoo, uh, we're not going to be able to sell our tulips this year. Uh, so one of the things that we did do is we did cut a lot of the tulips 
uh, that weren't in this main area, and we sent them out to many of the hospitals in Cincinnati, uh, basically for our main caregivers, the frontline workers, the, the nurses, and the, the staff at the uh, like Children's Hospital, UC. I would say it would probably take us uh, about three to four weeks to dig them. So as we go through, we are going to talk about Ohio's Native Plant Month. And did you know that Ohio officially named April as its Ohio Plant Month? So we want to encourage everyone to plant native plants uh, in their region. So some of the things that we're gonna look at are these beautiful red buds. And I'm gonna show a couple red buds right now. There's one, uh, the Tennessee pink and the Appalachian red. Uh, red buds are beautiful right now. And uh, they're just spectacular. The light purple lavender flower tree that you see on the sides of the roadsides those are all red buds. Uh, this, uh, again, there are many different varieties of red buds that you can use in your landscape. And Michelle's gonna turn to the left here and she's gonna show you a weeping white red bud. That's one called Vanilla Twist. And uh, so some of these red buds you can use in your main front landscapes. There's another dwarf weeping red bud called Ruby Falls. And there's another one called Lavender Twist. All these red buds are great pollinator plants and they do a great job uh, it, you know, for pollinators. In fact, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm sure there's bees buzzing around all the uh, red buds in the very top. Uh, it's a little cooler this morning or this afternoon than it has been, but they're still there. Another shrub that you're gonna see blooming this time of the, this, I guess, week is the viburnums. This is the viburnum flower. And you can see that one is a beautiful, beautiful viburnum, Berkwood viburnum. And then there's also many different types of viburnums, the Judd viburnum, uh, there's uh, uh, Mohawk viburnum. Those are some of the nice fragrant viburnums that you can see in the landscape. Um, but that, that is another beautiful plant. So uh, one of the things, this is the World Friendship Tulip, which is one of my favorites this year. Uh, just a beautiful uh, yellow and uh, you know one of the best uh, that I've seen so Rick every just asked what your favorite tulip was or what, what's, your favorite what's flower? my favorite flower <laughs> oh I see another I see two questions there my favorite flower <laughs> and do squirrels eat the bulbs <laughs> yes squirrels eat the bulbs and we are not friends with the squirrels <laughs> but they will eat eat the bulbs uh, favorite tree, if you want to pan over to this weeping tree right here, this is my favorite tree of all time. It's the weeping, uh, re or weeping Katsura called Amazing Grace. Uh, it just has such a nice weeping flow to it. And in the fall, it turns a beautiful butter yellow fall color and it emits this beautiful fragrance of uh, almost like uh, uh, burnt sugar in the fall. So uh, one of the things that we really try to do here at the zoo is plant so many different types of uh, uh, different uh, plants for everyone to enjoy. So every week of the year at the zoo, there's something different blooming. Then the question, are the viburnums fragrant? There's half of the viburnums are not fragrant, half of them are fragrant. So that's one of the things that, uh, you know, you have to make sure, like the Judd and Korean Spice viburnums fragrant, the Mohawk and Berkwood are fragrant. And then the last, uh, there's one called Carl Cephalum that's fragrant. Those are the fragrant viburnums. Then the, uh, I would say, uh, you know, another fragrant shrub would be the lilacs. Now there's some beautiful lilacs. And uh, I'm gonna walk over here and grab a lilac. This is one of my favorite lilacs. I gotta separate it from my red buds. That's a white lilac called Betsy Ross. And uh, Betsy Ross is a beautiful white lilac for the landscape. And uh, lilacs can get big. They can get somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to 12 feet tall. And uh, again, just a beautiful fragrance, which you can't smell right now, but it is just wonderful. So lilacs are one of my, again, all-time favorites. 
So, uh, and then red buds, there's a couple red bud flowers here. There are so many different colors of red buds. Uh, there's white, there's pink, and there's kind of a hot red. Uh, there's this one that's kind of a light uh, lavender. Um, just it, overall, right now, what you're seeing in bloom, the biggest bloom are the red buds, but then also there's a, uh, uh, the crab apples are in full bloom right now. So when you drive through the city of Cincinnati, that's what you're seeing in bloom, the pink and the red and the white. Are there any blue tulips? Um, well, this is about, this is what I would call as blue as I can get. This is uh, purple, but uh, I haven't seen any blue tulips, but there is a blue hyacinth called blue jacket. And actually, I'm gonna pick one right now for you. See, I can pick flowers now because no one's here to worry about that. That's a, a hyacinth called Blue Jacket. And uh, it's one of my favorites. It lasts a long time. And uh, it is one of the most fragrant flowers that you can uh, plant as a bulb in the fall. So you'll be looking for this in the fall and uh, when you come into that season. Uh, and mm, just wonderful fragrance. So the, another thing that I want to share with you is our program called planting for pollinators uh, what we'd like to do here at the zoo is we love to plant for our pollinator friends um, and starting in this time of the year about two weeks ago the cherries were in bloom cherries are one of the best uh, flowering trees for the spring and then in the spring you'll end up with uh, beautiful uh, cherry blossoms but then also the honeybees love the cherries so that's uh, very important in that early part of the season but then we run into the next which would be the uh, uh, again we've mentioned a lot today the red buds they are a great pollinator tree so early in the season it's more about the trees and bulbs uh, when it comes to pollinators so what we want to share with you today is the activity of planting a garden for pollinators so we really want to encourage everyone to take this time to plant for pollinators. So we're going to come over here, and this is a garden that we've put in, uh, and this is something that I would encourage everyone to do. We have in the background that's not blooming is a Cornelian cherry dogwood. That is probably the most, uh, I guess the earliest flowering tree that you're going to see in the spring, and that's what the early bees need. Then you come into uh, the cherries. This is actually a cherry that just got done blooming. Uh, so you can see every part of the season, we want uh, something in bloom. Then if you look down, we have these beautiful ornamental onions. These are, are one called Summer Beauty. There's another allium called uh, Millennium. And those are fantastic for our pollinator friends. Uh, so what we want to encourage you to do is plant a garden for pollinators and uh, you can go to the zoo's website uh, and go under the garden section and under the garden section you'll see planting for pollinator section and we have all kinds of suggestions on how to plant for pollinators uh, and we also encourage you to register your pollinator garden uh, as part of the zoo's planting for pollinators program. Uh, we would love to see over 2,000 uh, gardens registered by the end of this season. So that's going to be one of our goals. So uh, I encourage everybody to uh, go to their local independent garden store and look for our planting for pollinators and uh, you know enjoy uh, time out in the garden. I know everyone's walking through their neighborhoods this time of year and uh, I've never seen so many people out doing garden projects and uh, it's just a just a wonderful thing to see so many people out cleaning up their yards and getting ready for plantings and uh, it's really quite amazing so as you're going through and uh, walking through your neighborhoods and seeing all the beautiful trees and all the beautiful uh, shrubs and perennials uh, you know, some people wonder, what can I grow in the shade is a good question. Here are a couple things in the shade that I really love. This is a, uh, a plant called variegated Solomon seal. 
And if you can see it, the little Solomon seals, the little white flowers are starting to bloom right now. They're just emerging out of the garden and uh, they'll be about, dull, about 18 inches tall when they get done with beautiful variegated yellow and white leaves. And that's a great kind of uh, plant for the early uh, spring bloom. And it's also beautiful in the garden. And over here on the left, we're, uh, we're finishing up with uh, some hellebores, the Lenten rose. And in this Easter season, that is why they call them Lenten rose. They have blooms uh, this time of year. And in fact, there's a bee visiting one right there. So uh, he's happy. So what I'd like to do is thank everybody for this tour of the botanical garden and uh, really wish you all could uh, be here in person. Uh, but the Cincinnati Botanical Garden and Zoo would like to thank you and I'd like to thank our sponsors, uh, Macy's and J.P. Morgan Chase and all of our volunteers and corporate groups that have come in the fall and helped us plant all these beautiful gardens. Um, and they, they also helped and clean up and dig bulbs. We can't thank our volunteers enough. So again, uh, wrapping up, uh, thank you for coming to the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. Any questions?